stop making this video because Jesus is coming back soon. I mean, look around in this world. Um, everything that's been happening, it's in the Bible. Look around what's happening. You know, it's nothing easy that's coming for this world. You guys got to repent because Jesus is coming back soon. You got to um, let him in your heart, accept him as your only savior because he's the only, he's the only one who can save us, you know? And um, he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, you know? So if you guys are doing the best stuff you guys are going the right path it's time to get right with jesus christ start going to church start seeking him because that's what he wants uh um a contrite heart that um seeks him you know and um i'm gonna do this special prayer right now but um yeah but if you guys want to say it for repentance to repent for all your sins so your name can be written in the book of life please do it you know just come back soon this can maybe be your last warning you know just calling you it's time for you guys to get back it's time for you guys to get back and do the right stuff in his eyes so you can go to heaven you know and um look around there's a lot of kids having um visions of jesus return um grown-ups having the same thing you know and, and young people too so um i'm gonna do this special prayer if you want you can say it but if you don't just look look at everything that's been going on it's time for repentance don't repent when it's too late maybe tomorrow to repent is too late today's the day to repent all right god bless you all i'm gonna do this prayer now if you want to say it um say it with me all right say it out loud so the devil can hear you and he can, you know, so he can get out of your life, all right? So, dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose from the dead. I want you in my life. Guide my life the right path and write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all you got to do, you know? All right? God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Um, Have a nice day. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. I'm just, you know, I've been getting this thing. God is letting me know that he's coming back soon. And I'm nervous because, you know, like, I want to be ready for his come. And I want everybody else to be ready, you know. If you guys have any questions, inbox me. Um, Anything, you know, inbox me. God bless you all. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. How long, children, do you have before I come? How long do you have before you repent and turn back to me? And how long do you have the ones that are not seeking for me and looking for me? Do you not know that I've woken you up this morning? Do you not know that I provided everything for you? Do you not know that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And I am the one that does all things? How long will you continue to live in your own ways and not look for me? Look around. My word is the word, and I am coming. 
and I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to all those who are looking for my return. Please, children, look for me every day. Do not seek into your own ways, but lean not into your own understanding, but lean unto me, for I am the God, and I am faithful and true to all those who love me. Repent, for I am soon to come and to take my children back home where they belong, and to those that are not looking for me, to those that say that I am not coming. Woe unto you, for you will have what you want, a world without me, a world with destruction that you have never seen. I do not wish that any perish, but I wish that all come into my love, my understanding. If you will only seek me and get down on your knees and pray unto me, and I will come unto you. Does any father reject his child for coming unto him? I tell you, I will not, for I love you more than you ever know. I love you so much that I died for you, and I wish that you be with me. But I am coming, and I am coming quickly. Your time is short. Just look out the window. Look at all the things around you. It is not my word that says all these things that's happening right now. It's happening because I have foreseen it. In my word, you will find everything that's happening today. It all points to my return. Get right with me, children, for your time is fastly running out. And I am coming. Be ready and be watchful, for I come at a time when you do not understand or do not know. I am the Lord thy God, and I love you. And for those who do not believe, for those that hear, these messages and do not receive them. How much time do you think you have? Is your soul ready for the rapture? Are you really ready to be left behind? I tell you horrors like never before will be released upon the earth. Do not wait, but accept me today. I am the Lord your God. Receive this message and take it to my word, for I am faithful and true for all who seek me. Love Jesus Christ. Does it really concern you? They could die and go to hell? Even though you're a lover of Christ? Where's the anguish? Where are the tears? Where's the mourning? Where, where's the fasting? Closer than that? Does it matter about the Jerusalem that's in our own hearts? But one of the really sad things about this moment right now is that there are hundreds of you in this crowd who do not want your life to make a difference. All you want is to be liked. Maybe finish school, get a good job, find a husband or a wife, a nice house, a nice car, good vacations, grow old healthy, have a fun retirement, Die easy, no hell. And that's all you want. You don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. And that's a tragedy in the making. And I get 40 minutes to plead with you, don't buy it. With all my heart, I plead with you, don't buy it. By that dream. I just want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want to carry this kind of a burden. I don't want to have to weep over my family anymore. I'm going to go take it by faith. You see, you, you, you either walk away and go back to your passivity and say, I'm just going to be an ordinary Christian.
and there's no such thing. No anguish, no fasting, no prayer, no brokenness. That's just doing. Our so-called awakenings, our stirrings, last but a short time. And when the last, when the re short-lived revivings and awakenings come from the hand of God, they are so short-lived. And in those times, we promise God we'll never return to our passivity. But it's not long, it's just weeks or months and we're back and this time we slip further back into passivity than when we started. I speak from experience. And we say this time, oh God, you've touched me for life. I'll never be the same. And it's like fireworks. A loud bang and a lot of noise and then it dies. That's all the devil wants to do is get the fight out of you and kill it. So you won't labor in prayer anymore. You won't weep before God anymore. You can sit and watch television and your family go to hell. Whatever happened to anguish in the house of God? Whatever happened to anguish in the ministry? It's a word you don't hear in this pampered age. You don't hear it. Anguish means extreme pain and distress. The emotion so stirred that it becomes painful. Acute, deeply felt inner pain because of conditions about you, in you or around you. Anguish. Deep pain. Deep sorrow. The agony of God's heart. A true prayer life begins at the place of anguish, a place where lifetime decisions are made. You see, if you, you set your heart to pray, God's going to come and start sharing your heart, His heart with you. He's going to open up His heart, and I'll tell you, there's pain in His heart. But He sees, and so few to hear. He's going to show you the condition of His church. He's going to show you the conviction to your own heart, and he's going to ask you a question. What is it to you? What is it? Why didn't God use them in restoration? Why didn't they have a word? Because there was no sign of anguish. No weeping. Not a word of prayer. It's all ruin. If it has not been born by the Holy Spirit, where when you saw and heard of the ruin, and it drove you to your knees. Took you down into a baptism of anguish where you began to pray and seek God. Then finally coming for street rallies here in the city and walk in the streets and then wind up on 42nd Street and see them selling a kind of heroin would kill you. Say, I've got the good stuff, it'll kill you. And I remember breaking down, and it didn't matter the crowds going by. I sat on a fire hydrant tape on the side of a building and wept. And I was in anguish. I was in anguish four blocks from here on Broadway. Weeping and crying and wailing. I wasn't looking for a ministry. I wasn't looking to build a church. I was feeling God's pain for a lost city. And I've never had anything that's been any worse to God in my 50 years that wasn't born in agony. Never. Never. It's all been flesh otherwise. <laughs> and all our projects all our ministries, everything we do. Where are the Sunday school teachers that weep over kids they know are not hearing and they're going to hell? And I cry, oh God, where are the voices? Where are the people that cry out against them? Where are the praying people? And I say, God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, keep me on my knees.
There's going to be no renewal, no revival, no awakening until we're willing to let him once again break us. God, that's what we desire.